unstable lah. So I get your part will be just share later on. I will start my part first. Okay, so you guys all can see my screen, right? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um. By the way, if you guys still remember, on the during last round of meeting, we have been presented. Me and Rachel has been presented. Uh, Magna International to you guys. Basically, this is another competitor to the Magna International, which is the name itself suggests is uh Aptic. I will I will just call it as the, this company as. Okay, so uh for the business part, I will let Richard to be present to you guys all later on. So let us please uh share with you on uh, what happened to the management and also figures side. Okay, first of all, um, number one, this in terms of uh so-called shareholding by the top big funds itself is already holding more than 40 percent percent stakeholder on this company alone in fact this percentage is quite surprising me so this is what this is this is the first one and but when we come down to the board of director uh ceo together with the board of director itself quite sadly is not more than 0 0.5 percent total out of the 100% of the share itself. So the other one, I don't know who are them. Maybe it's just a, maybe just a in, in individual shareholder, but they are not either a senior management or they are not a board or director itself. Only three of them are in this of the top 10, right? Okay. Uh, shareholding, uh, in, in the trading wise, right? Okay. One good sign is that uh, I saw CEO it first is holding a quite significant number in terms of share. Second, uh, this guy is uh, slowly, I would say, buying a share, even though the share, the share buy has been uh, increased over the year slowly. Okay, whilst others is like all this kind of vice president or CFO, sometimes they are just selling part of their share, but it is uh, basically not affecting uh, so-called portion portion of their shareholding. Okay, this is what I observe. In terms of the board of directors, there are 11 of them. Only one is working as a CEO, as you can see top of there, this guy. The remaining 10 is come from different, different background uh, from various of the company. They are served as a non-executive director in this uh, company alone, 10 of them. Okay, this guy, okay, slightly different. If, if we are comparing to the previous company, which is uh, Magna itself, Magna, the CEO itself is one of the core founder. But this guy is not okay. This guy, when I study this this uh, profile, this guy is purely a finance guy, starting from the bachelor degree finance, up level study in the master, still continue with the finance, okay, and starting his career in the finance uh, industry as well. But before he joined this company on two thousand and ten. He is served as a one founding uh founding partner of so-called Pride PE investment firm, which is focusing on investing and building and improving middle market companies. I have no any idea of this uh PE investment firm after that because there is no record on this firm after this. Maybe it's still there, maybe it's no longer there already. But anyhow, this guy joined this company starting from 2010 as a CFO. When is the first he joined the company, is it's, it's already been uh so-called uh, work as a CFO already, okay? Then change the role to become the CEO on 2014. Uh, it's a numbering mistake, 2014. 2000, starting from 2015 onwards, he is served as a president and CEO on this company till today. It's already almost four years, okay, for for this guy. So I, if you ask me, I have no idea why why he is uh, entitled a title so called CFO on this uh this is not a small company but this is not very big company either right okay in terms of the remuneration eleven of them total if you see based on the salary alone it seems like uh it's a quite a lot among there but if you see based on their net income after tax they have almost one billion net profit USD so. The portions of the so-called uh, compared to the uh, net MPAT is uh, not really significant, just 1.56. So you can imagine how large is their so-called uh, revenue compared to the others. Okay, 
Well, no dividend policy on this company. But if you want to compare a cost, the Magna Magna give a, a, a little bit higher in terms of the dividend. It's around 1.2, if I'm not mistaken. This company is just giving about 0 0.88. Same as Magna, they are distributing dividend every quarter basis since long time ago. Okay, so if we are comparing across this company towards the Magna in International, the so-called, um, the only quality uh, metric that I found on this company, uh, which is good at in terms of GPM, EPM, and also so-called NPM, and also RE is, is very good as well. But in terms of the other metric, it seems like the Magna International, they give a better result compared to this company. Okay, so this is a, just a, p, a brief comparison. In terms of the financial summary, okay, I studied across his uh, financial and compare against the mana. I think I think this one comparison will be bring much more meaningful. Okay, okay, there are five points I'd like to highlight. First, um, okay, if you want to compare to the another company, there are, this is the uh, wording uh, wording uh, typo. Uh, this is compared to so called Magna. This company producing higher top line. Okay. Thus, is not there is no uh, accident that it actually the borderline to be higher compared to the mana that we introduced to you previously. Okay. But in terms of the PPE itself, it's just about half of the size of the mana compared to each other. Okay. Total borrowing between both of them. There's not much, no much different. The, the, the value is, is, is almost to be the similar. And if you're comparing across to the cash conversion cycle, okay, uh, not much different as well. But one is the thing that I found out a very significant difference comparing to Magna is that if you see across Magna for 10 years, almost every year, their so called cash uh, flow from the operation itself is growing by year on year basis of Magna. But if you see this company, right, across about nine years, okay, the, the cash flow from the operation is not really growing. Instead, they, I will see it as a remaining stagnant and just fluctuating across the year. This is one thing I found that is very significantly different. Okay, uh, in terms of their so-called revenue breakdown, uh, I would say this company will be have more even distribution in terms of their revenue breakdown compared to Magna because Magna will be focusing quite a lot, uh, so called of their revenue on US followed by the Europe. This one, some part of it, it goes to the Asia. Okay, this is something different compared to Magna. Okay, this is just a very simple variation. If you are going to use a very simple uh variation to, uh, perform on this company. I would say it's quite overvalued. Instead, if we study across last time Magna, it is a quite fair value. This is something which is different. And I don't think I will need to, uh, we need to go through on the details on the figure figures until there is questions from the floor. Um, because I think I already highlight uh, four to five major of the points that I got to study across this uh, nine to 10 year compared to the Magna company. In short, um, if you're talking about growing company, I will still opt for the Magna uh, versus of this company. Just looking on the figure alone. Any other questions? And then, Bell, I want to ask, is this session recorded already? Okay, no question from me at the moment. from me as well yeah because don't know what is the business yet <laughs> True. yeah just just by simply comparing the numbers between these two companies yeah Being so far okay no okay more. next whose company next don't no question. No. I think we just wait for Wait, one question. Um, just on the number side, I can see that the earning per share is like uh, stagnant since 2015. Right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Why is that so? Uh? This is something which is really different. In fact, they will, you will see their revenue is not growing as well. Not only on the bottom, on the top. Of course, if you see based on the, in, in terms of the quality metric, M, uh, MPM, uh, GPM, it seems like give a quite nice figure compared to the Magna. Okay. But what is this company doing? You have any idea what's the business about? Uh, I'm just looking looking on the figure alone. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think you, you might have a clearer picture when you, okay. talk, when, when you go to the business segment. <clears throat> well, okay. Then a uh, comment is that I think you should link up with the business lah a bit. You can't just say that you don't know anything about the business lah. <laughs> okay. Hey, where's where's our Sifu? Uh? Okay. Um. Uh, on that, uh, I answer on behalf of Adrian is that uh, uh this mother flight is uh, delayed for a couple hours since the afternoon. So he would be uh, on his way to fetch his mother now. Uh, he will join late, Adrian. Uh, okay, yeah. I think we should move on to the next company. Uh, it's 10 14 right now. Okay, mm. thanks. So. You want to go, Darren? Uh, okay, we go. Uh, uh oh. then I go first. Law, can uh, I go? You, yeah, I share screen. Uh, mine is very simple. You can see my screen. Oh, this company. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Hey, simple say, uh, business, simple financial done. Correct. Very straightforward. It's How long is that? already? This one. Five years. Five years. Five yeah. Two zero one four. Yeah. Very simple. It's just insurance for the animal. Now, hey, I thought they they have five over five hundred over staff already. Five five hundred uh. This one, wait. Uh, let, I I double check later. The one that I got. Yeah was uh maybe this is 201 force information oh. yeah maybe because one thing about this company is very interesting and uh, the the annual report they very go funny, and scan, right? they very funny eh? they go and scan uh, and i think maybe i show you uh, they go and scan uh, and then they can write on top of it one you know yeah you see this this how they how they show the annual report like they can, write, uh. they can write stuff on that one you know they, like they, they just make their own report and they make the change make, make the numbers changes they, they just mention which part they they make growth then they just mention for that only hey, yeah very good, huh? very good huh? yeah and then they show you the difference they show you how much they grow they ah. show you like still target whatever <laughs> and then and then the the what they call this are uh, the founder is very open about uh what he learned what he failed how what he encountered all his if, processes, yeah. Because most of the financial report that we're looking at, right, people are writing on the third party perspective. But this yeah. financial report is right on the first party perspective. It's okay. writing the way in that uh, yep. I feel that we are growing, blah blah blah. This kind of cheating. You gotta search the company culture, no? Uh actually wow. the culture I read a bit la. Employee are, satisfaction. I think quite high. Should the CEO rating uh. quite good. Yeah, should be quite good. Yes. Yeah. Not like those damn corporate, uh, I uh, all right. Yeah. Very funny. <laughs> still, in fact, still in fresh. Fact, uh. In fact, if you read, uh, they even have a lot of like how to say, uh, uh sense of they humor. like to tease themselves. One, yeah, yeah, yeah. They they even tease themselves. One, so I it's the first annual report that I enjoy reading so far. <laughs> all right, true, yeah. Okay, anyway, uh, let me just move on. Market cap uh, 1 .0, close to 1.1 1 .1 billion. Uh. Uh, staff strength, maybe this is wrong. Uh, go and double check. Basically, it's a straightforward animal medical insurance. So, you know, even like for human, uh, for human, we have uh, accident policy, we have uh, hospital surgical policy, right? For the animal one, this one is basically the uh, so called hospital and surgical policy. Uh. Uh, you can see from the chart here, the blue one is existing pet, the gray one is uh, new pet, and they continue to grow. Uh, and then uh, in terms of premium, it's uh, 
no need to say it's recurring premium and then this is the growth of the premium strategy. Basically, it's increased number of referring uh, veterinary practices, increased number of referrals from active uh, veterinary practices, number of third-party referral from member, uh, online lead generation, very simple, very straightforward. Uh, other, other, explore other member acquisition channel. Uh, this one can be anything la, like, uh, you know, roadshow, so on and so forth. Expand internationally now uh in us and canadian market but they're looking into uh, australian market for further expansion and per pursue other revenue opportunities uh the difference between them uh is the old model of insurance uh usually uh, uh provided by many other uh insurance company for animal uh but for them they are straightforward uh they they basically is like very very direct in paying they only have one simple plan, one simple policy plan, 90% coverage, uh, no payout limit, and they pay to the vet directly. Uh, how they compare to their uh, competitors, uh, the, there's a simple chart here. La. The, the chart here shows that um, basically everything also they take, meaning can pay hospital directly within minutes at checkout without you needing to take any action, offer one simple plan without confusing option or choose from always 90% coverage of treatment, injuries, illnesses, no financial limit per year per illness or per pet, Co covers uh, approved surgery, so on and so forth, dietary, dietary supplement, uh, actual vet, vet bill, uh, freedom to use any vet, allows customers to choose uh, their own deductible amount, customer care 24-7. Now, uh, some, some of the examples of uh, cases that they cover, for cats, got kidney, la, urinary tract, la, thyroid, vomiting, diarrhea, weight decrease, blah, 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 and it, uh, dog is pretty much the same. So frequently encountered situations. La. Uh, traditional pet insurance, always wait to get reimbursed. You pay and see reimbursement, sacrificing quality for cheaper monthly rate, claims pay are restricted uh, at defined rate, uh, and no deductible, quite a lot to uh, that they need to fork out cash. We are waiting and worrying about getting in touch with insurance provider. But for them, they are very straightforward. 24-7 support, claims paid on time, uh, one simple plan, nothing complicated, lifetime deductible, no limit, no no limit of payout, no worrying about cancer policy, so very good. Uh, the model itself, they are strategic in terms of reducing this thing called frictional cost, so they buy their own building, they don't need to pay rent. Uh, business model, as, as, as with any insurance model, is very simple, straightforward, whereby uh, the lucky ones are paying for the unlucky ones. Lah. Uh, it's the same model even for humans. Uh, five-year report card, so they even great to tell you all their endeav endeavors, uh, what they have done well, what they have not done well, A minus, B, A plus, so and so forth. So revenue had growth since the last five years. Uh, they target 650,000 to 750,000 in five years by Q2. Uh, they have uh, been, what do you call that? They are able to trace this, uh, they are able to achieve this. So it's uh, A minus. Goal is to be 15% in terms of operating margin. Uh, this one B. Uh, internal rate of return tracking nicely is an A. Free cash flow positive is an A plus. So I leave the financial aspect to uh, Honke for him to present later. Basically, uh, they're quite open. Um, same source step sales. Uh, this one is one of their strategies uh, uh, because they realize that if they continue to uh, improve their sales within the same stores, right? They boost their sales by 40%. Yeah, so in 2015, uh, what are the challenges uh, for the past five years? 1516, 1718. So uh, onboarding new colleagues, la, uh, subcategory pricing, uh, lack of execution. They even, they even show and tell us what. Uh, they have not been able to execute well one of their project called Nirvana. Uh, it's just, you know, some sales-related project. Uh, 
uh, nothing nothing extraordinary. Uh, so yeah, you mentioned about culture right? in two hundred one six. Uh, culture took a backseat. Team members didn't feel hurt, so they are very open about talking this kind of thing. Biggest disappointment, like I mentioned, was one of the project called Nawana. Did not move forward to a small step backward. Surpass our growth. Surpass human bandwidth. That means overloaded. Uh, every staff with like maybe one headcount doing three person's job. That kind of thing. Two hundred one seven slowed down a team and hurt alignment and poorly describing why something is important to the organization. So you see, very frank, very open, very direct. Um, we were spending money on things people don't care about: postage, snail mail, need lower friction. Yeah, I think you need to move on with key points. Oh, okay. I think I move faster. Uh, okay. Actually, almost finished already. Five year highlight. Uh, what they able to achieve claims automation. So they say it's an unexpected surprise. The claim automation is very fast, straightforward. Uh, and then sim store cell metric. Uh, pen thinking about penetration rates per vet clinic. Same store sales higher in vet uh, hospitals with account manager, territory partners. So basically, it's about uh, managing the uh, provider better with a presence of account manager in, in, in the midst. Lah. And then the purchase building reduce uh, the, the cost by uh, almost by 100% uh, basis point. Okay, uh, Honke, I pass over to you. Okay. Great. Able to see? Yes. All good. Okay, so first slide the top 10 largest shareholder in the company. The, the CEO and the founder still hold very a largest share in the company, which is about 5.45%. Uh, second one, the, the weapon was, I forgot why it's a position already. Sorry, did that have to track back? Okay, the other was from the institution. So he still have a very high operating power lah, for the CEO itself. So next one, okay, CEO, this further. Uh, one good thing that I see in their management team, uh, I believe all of them like pets, which all of their profile picture here holding their own pets. Okay, so a basic history of uh, why this CEO found this company is when this CEO uh, during age 13 or 14, so his own pet have some diseases and illnesses, so they went to this uh, Animal hospital, they are already veterinarian. Okay, uh, and out they give up on giving treatment to the pets because of insufficient fund. So from there, he decided to read up the pet insurance when he grew up. So a bit of history. So uh, <clears throat> from here, uh, working culture. This CEO is, is encouraging their employee to bring over their pets to work. So I believe as a employee if you're able to bring your pets over and taking care of him together working you should be very happy lah. so overall employee culture should be no issue and should be very happy okay uh, others management uh, not really important all right next one so there's some of the poses uh. this one is for stranger officer cfo then uh, the veterinary system this is the one that uh, Checking on how the system is going on. They deal with the veterinary. The head of territory partners, the so called sales force has that. Sales force head. So he looking at uh, finding those agent agent to help them to sell the insurance. Okay. Well, okay. So remuneration structure mainly on the salary. So salary overall. Okay. Uh, as of now, cannot be justified by the person that because they are earning actually just turn positive this year for the EB. Meanwhile, for MPIT, all still negative. Okay, remuneration in total with all the stocks included about four point eight B million in USD. Okay, fixed salary but stock the works. <coughs> okay, uh, a bit on financial negative EB since two zero one one means when they start uh in ten years uh, eight years ago. Uh, recently just turned positive over here. Okay, here yeah, a negative for three percent million from now only just positive for zero point two six million. Uh, meanwhile, MPAT and EPS still at the negative side. Okay, cash flow overall is still healthy. Uh, recently they purchased a so-called head office in two zero one eight. 
and there is a negative of FCF of 47 million in USD. Okay, uh, operating cash flow improving all the time. So now it's about 12 million. Uh, okay, due to expansion. So for this company, uh, reason, the first thing I chose him uh, because of financial start to turning positive, they are at the turning point. So if they're able to continue their growth in the next future, within the next three to five years, so I believe there is a should be a sustainable growth in the future. And in US, there's no competitor listed at the moment. Some personal findings. Uh, not paying dividend in the near future as they are continuing expansion. So at a turning point, potential to lease a continued growth. Uh, one of the reasons, catch up with Patreon, as previously, the last VC we have is we're talking about Adrian's friend, which uh, they have a business on the pet, the Mausa Mausa thing. So currently, I think Patreon is quite good. Lah. So, okay. But however, to me, they have a limited profit uh, as the model that their brands show just now, how they price their premium is based on the average of the Peter renewing fees plus additional 30%, which 50% is used for fossil fuel fees and 50% for the employee costs and ETC. So this company still has unjustified OP ratio or EV or EBIT because they are still at losing of money. Okay, uh, that's it from me now. Any question for the financial? <laughs> Questions? Uh, Richard asked a few questions in the group chat. Group chat. Let me check. Any regulatory risk for insurance? Pitched by CEO about history or why that this code is scripted? Ah, okay. Cultural good means be rather profitable, less stress on yourself, funding their main expenses. Oh, oh, what they do? What's EB? 2.26? Two point two six million. Regulated risk. This one need to find out a bit. Uh, yeah, second because, question. What does it mean? A pitch by CEO about history. Sounds scripted. Oh, okay. Uh, this is what I found during one of their interview. Uh, it's mentioned from there lah. So maybe scripted lah, Of course. Yeah, Darren, you want to speak something? I was uh, I was gonna say that uh from from what I find out is that they so far seems to be like the only uh animal insurance provider that is listed. They and, listed and with a revenue of three hundred or a million. The rest yeah, less than hundred million. Yeah. So uh regulatory perspective so far is regulate human. I haven't I think I have to do a deep dive to see whether is there any regulation for financial related to animal. I think for the question that Richard asked, find out whether they IPO because of VC by PE or VC. This I need to find out a bit. We just see, oh, uh, don't have now. <laughs> the one is uh, like an article listed on Malifu. Profit just turned around, yes, EB 0.26 million. Uh, net profit still at the negative. In the future, we're going to look into VEX, Western by some kind of support or regulation. I think regulatory space part need to further dig up for the animal side. Net profit. Uh. Actually, their cost is quite high one. Uh, overall, based on here, okay. gross profit. EB, need to check out a bit. Uh. Let me go to the report. Of revenue, invoice costs, and 
and operating costs. Mainly on this, the, uh, they are increasing the sales and marketing costs. Uh, I think their strategy is um, they because of the expansion. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just based on last three years, their cost increased almost sixty percent, from fifteen thousand to twenty five thousand. So it's about sixty percent. Then for this one also increased about sixty percent. So still justifiable. For revenue increase for hundred twenty thousand over hundred eighty thousand. It's like two third. Both also increase about two thirds. Okay. Okay. Any more on the ground? Uh, okay, uh, one thing I need to ask uh, how to evaluate this kind of company? I have to wait for Adrian, is it? Yeah, this one I don't know how to evaluate because they are just start to turn positive only. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Maybe move to next company first and wait for him. Oh, for insurance, ah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Agent of Formula One. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay next him. company. You told me before. Right. Any any more questions? No, no. Three, two, one. Next. Next. Daniel. Me first, eh? Yeah. Can okay, go first? Who's Wan Yang? Wan Yang is you, lah. Ah, Nabil, take over. Okay. Uh, so I want to present our group. Hey, okay. Richard, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can I continue? Yeah. Uh, okay, this company actually is, you know, law, I property. So basically, they are this kind of business model. Wait, before that, I want to show something. Uh, I show this is the history of the company first of I show this one easier okay so actually they are start up as a basically their business model used to be just to provide selling websites okay so yeah hold on yeah uh, so Last time they sell website, then because out of all this range, they decided to choose uh because they decided to choose uh to advertise real estate listing uh instead of the others because they find creating website industry is too way too competitive because they need to compete with too many big uh big companies. So over the years as they Expanded, they are the type that they acquire the similar company in different regions. That's the whole story. Lah. So they started acquire from Australia, then acquired, uh, invest in Europe areas. That's why you can hear, you see, they went into Europe. They keep growing their audience. Then they also increase their coverage in other than website uh, apps and then they went to China uh, then they launched the China uh, like 
outreach for Chinese investors to invest in uh, international properties like in US or in uh, Australia or in anywhere else. Lah. Okay, so they also did, they acquired this company, this is one form, basically it's like uh, after the agent go and rent, the, rent out the property, they they use this form to fill in already, then straight away, uh, one shot, easier for the client. No? Then if, let's say, if rent finish already, like stop the lease or anything, then they want to find new houses, this will be providing a data of uh, other companies, uh, sorry, provide the data uh, to, to recommend to the client uh, what property to what other place you want to find or anything. Okay, so they also went to North America, which is uh, these two platforms are Move and Realtor. Okay, uh, so they now they expand to Asia. That's why you have iProperty Group. You have, uh, they, other than their normal real estate.au property, they, now they also have uh, flatmates targeted the younger generation. The younger, uh, like college or this kind of people, lah, this uh, age range. So they acquire, they acquire India, they invest in India one also. These three companies who uh, do similar things like air property in India. Then they also started doing uh, finance stuff, finance related, like, uh, it's not finance related, more like, um, Let's say if you buy a house, this, uh, this will actually help you cal auto-calculate then after that recommend you what home loan plans or this thing. So uh, that's why you have Smartline Personal Mortgage Advisors. Then Home Track is basically also uh, a valuation company of a property. Okay, so that's the basically the overall history and the business model. So as you can say, it is actually an advertising platform. So they have, uh, where's my, okay. They have their advertising platform, which is subscription. Uh, later I'll show you lah. Subscription, listing that, banner advertising, performance uh, advertising and contract. Later I'll show you. So basically, they sell their customer is agent like me lo, and my other friend. Lo. So we, one thing I noticed, especially in my company, uh, among agents, we are taught to like spend as much money in terms of advertising. So especially for sub-sale. So that is where iProperty comes in. So what I noticed is... Uh, because they create such a culture, uh, this company has this advantage. Oh. Like they they do in terms of like uh you pay first, then after that you spend the credits later. So I I can tell the business model definitely have like certain amount of float lah. Okay. So this is how normal iProperty website. This is the first page, ah, okay. So they are this is the uh you add much more money. Uh, because of uh, the listing is popular, that's why it turns on the first page. So basically, appear on the first page, they, some agents pay a bit more. And this is also sort of uh, advertising. So, okay. Okay, so other than the just now the property related, the four income streams, you have events also they organize events nowadays they organize in hong kong a lot lah because they want to advertise to hong kong buyers now uh data revenue they sell to uh, they use it lah then financial services basically now as i just now said uh they have valuation uh company on this thing and then they got recommend the uh the mortgage plan on this thing okay uh so this is their they yeah, so this is uh, based on geography. Later, Tuanyang will show you the geographical in detail. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, recent developments, they actually, they thought I'll explain why uh, I'll find out more, but actually they, are ex they expanded into Singapore. Because to let you explain, now uh, they already conquered Indonesia, they conquered Thailand, they conquered Malaysia, and uh, Australia, this May 4, and then the America. Where are Yeah. Uh, so Singapore is basically conquered by property guru. Uh, okay. So now they try to penetrate by this. Uh, they started investing in this year. Like. Okay. Uh, to me, uh, the good thing is uh, agency is like, especially for older generation, uh, most people won't purposely set up a website. They prefer going a portal and then consumers are, uh, are like sort of a condition to go to a portal and choose a property. So in Malaysia, our property branding is well recognized. In uh, Australia, REA is very well recognized. So that's what, why I chose this company. Lah, because in my training program, they also straight away teach people how to spend and uh okay. yeah uh one thing to note uh, because uh for this kind of platform advertising platform kind of uh company it's like for us as advertiser as agent we don't uh now we have property guru in malaysia like we have property guru we have our property ma so property guru is uh another company from Singapore, uh, they we not I noticed that our property can conquer some area, so some area can be uh conquered by property guru. So not all the time, hundred percent will go, uh, that the agent will choose that particular platform. So, uh, this one, I'm still not sure about the core earnings. Uh, whether it can increase next to three five years uh. Okay, toxic factors, the thing is, uh, they can be, there's still a risk because like, like I said, like people like me, I'm the young, sort of younger generation in terms of agency industry or developer industry, they all tend to move towards uh, creating your own website or your own, or you use Facebook because actually to understand I property only where works well if the consumer go and like Google la, go and search on the uh website. But for Facebook, actually it uh targets people instead. So it's like in terms of if you are very aware about the advertising on, on internet advertising, actually more people as as uh people get more educated or so, people will tend to move towards uh Facebook, but definitely there's a need for ad property and this kind of platforms because it's more for uh, sub-sale and also for people who don't really, don't want to waste so much time on creating a new website. Uh. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I'm talking about. So I move on to management. Uh, they actually have, I just not explained the whole line of how they acquire so many companies. Uh. Yeah, I just skip this part. So you can see Malaysia, Indonesia. This I property in Singapore, property guru has 95% market share. Uh, so they that's why it find it makes it very hard for Singapore to for REA to penetrate into Singapore. So that's why they form a new joint venture. Uh they have Hong Kong, they have Thailand, they have China, similar to GY, is another company to compare. Uh, events, India, okay. Okay, so they go into India one, it's not 100% state. Yeah. Okay, North America is smooth and realtor. Okay, so basically news. This uh, company takes up 56 majority of shares. So as you can see, this is uh, 
the previous CEO is retired since uh, January. Okay, because actually this company they have a shift in management uh, on in this year la, early of this year. Last year September they only finished uh, putting up the new role. So today now uh, the new batch of leaders has came up. So what I can tell you is that for news is very related to a lot of out of uh, out of twelve uh, to fifteen directors and uh, management people, they are related to news. So this one you find out more why and uh, how. Okay, key management is CEO Owen Wilson. Okay. So basically, he is actually a CFO of uh, REA. Okay. He is CFO of REA for four years, uh, since 2014. So then now, this year, he only appointed as CEO. Okay. Uh, so now, this guy is actually uh, responsible for driving like long-term growth strategy across Australia and Asia. Okay. Uh, so he's very instrumental in terms of, uh, for digital driving digital strategy for RA Group, and in joining the company in two thousand nine as chief product officer, uh, consumer experience all these things. Okay, and actually this company is too big already. So many, actually got so many uh man managers, but I only pick these three lah. So uh, they are very focused on product offering. Actually, I will... Okay. I still got one more thing to show, actually. Hold on. Uh. Then my story ends already. Uh, any question first? Um, no. Okay, hold on very fast. Okay, this is what I chatted with my friend lah. My fellow friend Adrian, which is Nicholas. So this is the base the basic I property our website. Do you like it or not? Okay, I was I wouldn't I don't like lah actually. So this is property guru's uh interface. So compare with I my question, right, will be why if let's say I property have a claim to have so high tech, high tech, but the like in the interface, what you see, like uh, yeah, like at the front, this is what you guys see, right? But at the back end, right, it's like very chaplang lah, like two o o eight kind of uh or two like five years ago kind of uh view ah. So I don't like it all. <laughs> so the view in for other platform is nicer. So I just wonder, uh, because it's like very for me, uh, this kind of business model is good in terms of everyone. They have a good mode, like everyone want to spend money. But the bad thing is, let's say if another platform has a nicer interface and then some more cheaper cost, of course, uh, of course, uh, the agents like me or other advertiser or developer will prefer. Uh, the cheaper one. Ah. So that's it for me. I pass this on to Huan Yang. Uh, how do you all spend the money? Ah? Uh, okay, where are Okay, so we have this kind of package. This is agent. They have agent and developer package. So agent, right, they have like uh, per year you put 2,000 yearly or uh, this amount they will put until you spend finish all your credits ah. so like per ad like this right they would uh, put it up like for they use up like 
uh, example la, how many credits are like maybe 10 credits or 20 credits I, I don't know actually <laughs> but uh, like they also it's like they all pay the whole package first then after that you spend the credits later on not like Facebook Facebook is like you pay the more uh, after the the list the you get the number or okay. uh, uh, this one this one uh, you only pay the package is it nothing else yeah, yeah. this one yeah if you get the, if you get a sale also you don't have to pay anything uh. right sorry uh, what do you mean uh? don't get the sale no if you get the sale uh-huh it's either you get or you don't get but all they can confirm with you is they give you they will uh give you leads i don't oh. Oh. okay okay yeah. okay i show you actually my dad owns an account la. yeah so i show you everything la, from inside out so this is how we go in so they have login as just now is agent and developer so you see the interface i complain now because i don't like this kind of thing <laughs> okay uh view all these things so basically they are like that one okay so this is uh you can post this is the normal then they'll show you how many views all this thing and then they will tell you it's low or high or first page so they are actually indirectly pushing you to uh, make it premium or make it featured lah. so that's why you can, that what they can do is they give you a sh they show you the stats or how many views or something then if let's say uh, if you want to know how many people inquire view inquiries or then they yeah they tell you like per per listing that you post how many inqui inquiry you get lah. okay so it's like after it's like the list uh the credits right after you put this for they will set for a number uh amount of time so like for 10 credits like that you spend for uh like two weeks or half a month lah. then after that this is why it's upload but what if it's offline or suspended then they will uh ask you to advertise re-advertise it re-upload it that's like this so you got any question? Uh, then if not, then I pass it the time to Fan Yang. Okay. Uh, over 10 years, years is uh, 1,000 <laughs> You see myself only, I can't hear my young. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you're, you're lagging or? Yeah, I think
Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me share my screen. All right. All right. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, is that, mm. Let walk. Oh no. All right. Not bad. Not bad. Mm. Actually, uh, how many more companies are we supposed to cover? Uh, Fan Yang, then Daniel, Richard, mm -hmm. Darren, and uh, Adrian. So, supposed to be another three companies. Another three, another three la. La. so I think we're yeah. on time. One, yes. one for about 15 minutes. Yeah, why? Hello. Okay, can I hear? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm using my hotspot. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, back to my story. Please share your screen. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, can I? Can see ya? Yeah, yeah. Alright, so number one. Uh, the earnings per share got, got a sudden drop la, on 2017 and 2019. So this is the reason why. Why? Uh? Okay. And then after that, number two is uh, they started taking up debt. La. But to me, this debt is like uh, uh, 310 million. 310 million is about... I think it's a, to me, I feel it's a small amount. La. Okay, Because their free cash flow can easily cover their debt. So uh, to me, I see no issue. So reason one why because of impairment. So why impairment? <laughs> because of Asia, Asia. Uh, I think I think also a, a lot to do with the Malaysia and uh, the eye property. Uh, because they say that if they increase discount rate of one percent, they will have an impairment loss of forty uh, forty million uh, AUD. Uh, I don't know uh, who are the founder of eye property, but it's definitely not REA Group. They bought over it. They acquired it in twenty uh, seventeen. I think. They took a number, okay, and then also got brand right off lah. So quite, 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 quite massive ah. Even one percent discount rate, you already have impairment loss of forty million, already. okay. So, hey, eh? I didn't put here. Okay, carry on ah. I think behind. There behind, I show you. And number two is the borrowings. So, so borrowings, uh, I suspect because it's a uh, recent years only they got the borrowings one. Uh, recent years they are doing this uh, loan uh, facility thing for property one of their uh, segments uh. so I believe that one is part of their uh, business uh, to run they need a loan also uh. they need their loan facilities but it's not a lot of amount it's the amount is not big uh. okay then you can see uh, from here from the Australia Bank uh, Commonwealth Bank Australia to say uh. okay all right and then second thing over here ROE very high very nice and then you got uh intangible asset also very high, very nice. Okay. 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 So impressive uh ROE. So this this like one of the few companies that I've seen also very high ROE one. Maybe because it's tech. And then they never they didn't issue over the past eight years, uh, they didn't they didn't really issue shares. Uh, I don't see any movement. It's the same. Okay. And then the high intangible over here you can see is goodwill. Goodwill is uh uh seven hundred over million. Okay, this year impact hundred over mil about two hundred million. So this year dropped to five over million now. Nah. Impact what? Ah, let me show you. And then software, software also hundred over million. I, I don't know lah. The software hundred over million. It, it's the one that the anniversary is ah, hundred over million nah. <laughs> Which is what like times three yeah, three hundred over million ringgit. Okay, so in twenty eighteen, they acquired these two Smartline and Home Track, which is hundred over million. But the more crazy thing you can see is this one nah. acquisition of iProperty and Flatmates. I think uh, it, okay. This one is a you need to find out what how much they paid for i property uh, because I don't think i property worth that much uh. Flatmates maybe lah. Uh, it, it looks more professional. Looks more uh, has more views uh, overall on the website. Later I can show you. Okay, so overall cost structure. Overall cost structure is uh.
I think the expenses are quite evenly distributed except the the employee expense. Oh, what you have is ex employee ma. because in a tech company, uh, they have you have all these type of expenses la. But and there's no R and D la, So uh, okay. And then the next one is uh, over here similar. Nothing much to tell. Is that you have very high intangible asset la, for this company. Okay. Historical valuation. So if you go and Google today, you go and Google REA Group Limited share price, you will get a PE of 100 over. Uh, the reason why it's 100 over is because, like I said just now, um, your there's an impairment last year, 100, uh, 188 million. 188 million impairment is a one-off, so you cannot like consider it into the earnings. So you re readjust it, you get about 40 over uh, PE. Okay. Uh, in okay, did I show the? Yeah, I showed you already, much just now, right? This one. So, uh, the discount rate they have a certain in their annual report they have a certain discount rate that they actually measured for their impairment losses, for their impairment year on year lah for the companies that they acquired. So, if any uh readjustment required, they need to do this impairment lah. Okay, so this is the second time they did big big impairment lah. The the first one was uh. Yeah, this year. After 20, yeah, 2017, 2017, and then this one also, 2018 they bought, and then 2019 they have a huge impairment also. Okay? Okay. That's all from my side, but I can show you a few things. Just now I just went to go and check it out. So as usual, uh, you can use this similar web.com uh, to go and check your, uh, check the websites uh, that they have. So they, they acquired this, uh, flatmate.com.au uh, which is quite interesting uh, you go and you go and see the the, the side uh. <laughs> you can see people uh, posting their faces i oh. often use last time also <laughs> hey, you, hey you see like yeah. like like dude oh you want to stay with this guy you know matt yeah. monash law grad wow okay so uh this one, oh, one black color one okay so how you, how you go and find the the the, the views uh, you just throw inside here and then you just click uh click the website oh, so yeah. overall overall the websites that they bought uh, especially like the ones that are in australia are actually very high very high ranking one uh. so eh, so like uh, okay so you can see uh, this one is the visits per month you can scroll over here uh, about two million recently drop uh recently drop this one not only this the i property malaysia also recently dropped so i guess malaysia maybe we know uh, malaysia actually in, even australia so, uh, the property market is soft overall uh. It's soft overall. I mean, like maybe people can see house, but people don't really want to buy. So, I I don't know. Like maybe the China China people will buy lah. You know? So, uh, overall, I property also uh from five point eight million July now end of the year mm -hmm. is about three point five million. So I don't know. Maybe it's a trend lah, that less people will actually want to buy property at the end of the year. Uh, but the one of the thing is uh, uh their main one, which is the this one. Uh, this one realestate.com.au yeah this one this one looks this one seems to be quite strong uh, compared to the one that they compared to the one that they yeah see it's overall overall their country ranks number 15 is very high it's very very high i think the highest ranking in in the world right now i think is amazon if i didn't remember wrongly so this one you see very strong, I see. Can very consistent, very consistent. Thirty one million, but you don't really see this. Uh, you actually see the amount of duration of people stay there, the amount of bounce rate. Whether is it high bounce rate? Bounce rate means you click in and people click back out. Okay, and then uh, and then another thing you want to look at is the the organic search. So they have a lot of direct search and organic search. Uh. so direct search is means that you directly type the website. There is a lot of people already know the brand, so I directly type realestate.com.au. Okay. So uh ninety over percent uh ninety over percent organic. So it means uh it means uh uh all from uh Google, Google or people just search for them organically. Uh. It's not from referral, it's not from other websites, it's not from social media, it's all their brand, uh. they're very strong uh this real estate dot com dot is a very strong brand. Yeah, see even their advertising is like very, very minimal to their to their uh traffic. Okay. It's also a good choice of uh, domain name. Oh. You can really... Yeah, so in, in in when you're playing at this space, uh, when you're playing like, you know, one month you have 30 over million. Uh, 
<laughs> 30 over million. 30 over million receipts are, uh, uh I, I don't know, uh, like maybe uh, you just convert uh, 30, 36.63. Uh, then you just maybe one guy, uh, one your, you, you can determine, uh, but of course they won't show you uh, internally. Maybe one one receipt worth maybe 30 cents. 30 cents. So you got about 10 million. Uh. So it's like, it's like you can gauge, uh, you can gauge one. Uh. But it depends, uh, de but this one, not like that gauge. Uh. I mean, like, that one is organic traffic. But this one is they are playing at a different game of uh, uh, real estate people paying them money to to actually advertise. So they themselves need to in incentivize people, the agent, uh, the agent to actually uh, spend more. But I don't know whether this one is it the same model or not. This advertiser. Hey, this is not this is iBoy. Yes, someone talking. Are you, Richard. Are you doing the business model or the financials? I'm doing financials. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Question, question. The financials are is very tied up with the business model, lah. Huh? No question. Oh yeah, oh, I forgot to mention no. Oh. What's their growth rate? Uh? What's their growth rate? Uh? So so basically this company is generating from the advertiser from the credit package that they bought. And uh, um, okay, so I get it that uh, it's also driven by the property demand, the visits. Yes. It's yes. just that, right? I mean yeah, it's it will Correct. It will be driven by your property demand. So if your property demand is uh, less, people will of course spend less uh, on their platform. So as in a certain way, they will be impacted, but they won't. They won't. They won't die la. They won't die la. But it's not gonna be fun uh, because the 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 earnings will will drop uh. But overall, I see still okay la, because they. Uh, I know why. I know why. Okay, because they impair first before they before they. That's true. That's true. It's yeah. mainly about um, transactions. Okay, let's see. Ah, uh. earnings. Oh, still quite okay actually. <clears throat> Who's doing the management? Ah, uh? Annabella. Possibly but, uh, but the uh, curious thing about the, the uh, we might want to know about the impact. Like uh, uh, why there were impairments and stuff like that. Yeah, because in the in the annual report themselves, they already say already ma. In the for their impairment, they have this uh this discount rate and terminal growth rate. So, uh, from based on my knowledge lah, from what I understand is that uh usually for companies that you acquire, if it doesn't achieve the amount of uh growth rate or that discount rate that you apply based on their internal calculation. Then you have to impair one. You have to adjust one because you have a certain when you buy a company, you 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 value them at a certain growth rate, ma. So if you value them at that, you cannot you cannot buy it. Then you then you don't follow the valuation, ma. That's my is understanding, this company, la, huh? Is this company founded by Patrick Grove? Ah? Patrick Grove, ah. Your friend, uh. <laughs> you think that 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 for their capital allocation? Hey, but one thing to highlight, uh, everything majority of what we see just now, you can see I property, la, 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 la. majority of the revenue and profit is all from Australia. La, okay, so uh, I think agent was telling me today is like, oh, Australia or oh, China people buy one, la. <laughs> so maybe it's fueled by the Chinese. La. I don't know, la. maybe you know, rich like Richard's A2 meal also fueled by the Chinese. La. So Everything is filled by the Chinese. Uh. China, Chinese, uh, at least. Okay. Yeah, but, but do you know who's the founder? Is it Patrick Grover? <coughs> can Google, ma. Patrick Grover. Patrick Grover. G R O V E. Uh. Yes, G R O V E. Patrick Y in Grove. He is the core founder. Eh? You guys don't know who is Patrick Grover. Oh, eh, he's a Malaysian, uh, no right? Australian. He's uh, no, 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 no. He's the co-founder of Kacha Group, which is the Kacha Group, uh, the, the the one that you know you catch catch Kacha. 
And then, uh, and chairman of Kacha Group portfolio company in Listed Australia, including iProperty Group and iCar Asia. Yeah, if not mistaken, he's the one that uh, set up this iProperty and then also says Malaysia Ref and a lot of shit. Uh. <clears throat> he's, the he's the one buying out, buying out in buy out Malaysia founder. company, is it? Uh, he's the founder. Then after but... that, he set up, keep set up. He's a serial entrepreneur, uh, basically. Oh, so I don't time, think he found REA your... Group, lah. I oh oh, you studying REA Group or I Property? Oh, okay. they bought his company. <coughs> okay, so he exit uh, ready, lah. Okay, yeah, I understand. Wow, he's a core founder of iFlix, eh? Wow, all the Malaysia company he got fun one, eh? What low, eh? Okay. Anyway, uh, anything else? Yeah, Can I present understand. my one? Can. Okay, I want to go through go quickly. Can I go through quickly? Because I need to drive. Actually, I'm at McDonald's now. Then I want to oh. drive home right now. Very quick. Okay. It's very short. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Uh. Okay. Uh, <coughs> I think just now, Daniel mentioned something. Uh, sorry, Regarding? He mentioned something. Wait, let me see. Why I wrote. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Ah, okay. So regarding the cash flow from operation, comparing Magna and and this company, right? He's saying cash Magna is growing consistently year on year, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, on the cash flow from operating income. Yeah. So okay, I I spoke with uh sources, <laughs> sources that are related to this matter. Uh, they actually. Back then, 2008, 2009, Magna was a very was not even a regional player. It's quite a small company unit compared to uh, Active. So basically, Active was uh, was a company was called Delphi, D E L P H I, and then during the 2008, 2009 crisis, they kind of uh, crashed, and then after that, they kind of uh, revived. And then now at this moment they are split into two companies, technologies and active. So the uh, technologies part they are focused on powertrain and all, all that nonsense. Lah. Active is more focused on solutions. Uh, essentially over here. Wait, uh. Uh, Mobility and also safety, advanced safety and user experience. And oh, yeah, and this signal and power solutions. Okay, so this entire company is just focused on these two parts. Uh, it's <clears throat> the interesting thing I want to focus on about this company is that they are collaborating directly with Lyft, also. If not mistaken, when I presented about Magna, they're also doing that. So I don't know whether they are doing it together. And then over here, you can read, they're actually doing all this driverless, automated driving technology, and they are doing it live, even in Singapore. So I would suggest <clears throat> for people like Darren to take note whether there are such cars that already exist in the market now, that is already running. Uh, the rest actually is all similar to what Magna is doing, but the difference is Magna is like Pau Kalea, one, one, one stop shop. <coughs> this one is a bit more specialized because they separated into two companies. So uh, you can see the performance over here. I mean, in terms of share price, actually, it was not too long ago, 201, 20, uh, and now it's 95, 18 to 95. And then this one, the powertrain one, basically, is not really doing well. Uh, uh what else i want to comment <clears throat> let me think uh, okay one one thing yes one thing that is important okay this is the main slide i want to share so about this industry the reality is that most of these suppliers usually they have the backing of car manufacturers certain car manufacturers for example in japan maybe denso denso maybe is already uh like uh a lot of percentage of uh, maybe the holdings is also owned by, for example, like uh, Toyota, for example. So actually, 
they more often than not they will sell back to the same suppliers one, uh, same manufacturers therefore scalability in such companies i feel are rather limited in this sense uh this is actually a protected group but this concept is in 2008 2009 so from the sources that i gathered about this company in particular is that uh last time Del delphi was under gm so basically gm owns a large person percentage of this delphi basically they are they are like uh, mother and son kind of company lah. so uh what delphi also last time back in before 2008 they were making a lot of money it's very easy to earn because they just sell everything in very high margin to sell it to gm okay so it's damn easy but then since actually 2000 something then china really ramp up and then basically they so-called disrupted the entire industry because of this uh you know too cheap to ignore kind of pricing so it forces all these type of suppliers to uh, rethink their strategy <clears throat> and a lot of them collapse uh, basically um so all these previously so-called high margin kind of products becomes very commoditized and then the moment once a so-called technology in a car goes into the market it's very easy for someone to just buy the car dismantle everything and then try to figure out how to build it so as long as it's a very standard thing china for example china will uh, destroy it but the only thing is that you that kind of survive in this market currently is those that provide solutions so solutions meaning either they have the technology or or for example like if there is a industry uh, sorry daniel's industry uh you need people that uh, is uh what daniel what, what's the guy that you that is the highest pay one, uh? uh um among the engineers highest oh, pay is the uh, commissioning engineer yeah. so 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 <clears throat> So in this sense, it's like the guy, the person, the companies that are able to so-called commission the, the products or maybe they have to configure it. That means there is some settings that needs to be done and it's not so straightforward. That's where in this industry, you will be uh, have the pricing power. Lah. So um, yeah, that is the main things. The rest is, you know, it's about more or less about Sims. So I don't want to go through today. It's about uh, mega trends, whether you can ride through the mega trend or not. And then <clears throat> he also has 147,000 employees. So I hate this type of numbers. Uh, but other than that, it is quite reputable. Uh. So, you know, whether or not you can uh, so called tap onto this trend in the correct price, this is the question. No? Uh, okay. <clears throat> Any question about the business model? Tasfa? If no, okay, I'll throw in some a bit, a little bit of uh, macro thinking these few days that I thought of to uh, do a little bit of further thinking. So <clears throat> this one affects how you should study the companies or what kind of companies you want to pick this upcoming few months. Because, okay, overall, now I review what the world is currently moving okay first of all we can obviously see a lot of negative view and then we keep printing uh, doing a lot of qe right and then even if the interest rate goes up a little bit they cannot tahan and then go back down am i right so <clears throat> but uh technically speaking because of all this in the previous generations without the power of technology by right uh inflation should go up lah. but then at the current current scenario what is happening is uh, because there's technology, there's internet, and the, you see, for example, like e-commerce. Actually, if you look at, for example, like the November 11, uh, the you know this mega sale, everything's very competitive. Everybody has to fight for customers, and even though yes, the the sales is good, but then you only do it like maybe once or twice or maybe a few times a year. Other than that, you're basically as a SME, <coughs> you're competing like hell with other com uh, other SMEs because it's so transparent now and obviously with other tech platforms for every every vertical lah. so uh, in this in this nature uh, you can't really have a real inflation because it's so competitive compared to previous uh, compared to before and then secondly because of technology like the internet as well as all this uh, stuff uh, like the tools and everything everything's already priced in very quickly 
So I I don't know how will this so-called uh, crash will come, which a lot of uh, Bloomberg and all these people are talking about. They say, oh, next year will be a crash, next, next year will be a crash and everything. I don't know how it will come out, how it will appear, because there's a lot of liquidity. There's not much real uh, debt because it's all printed, but the uh, inflation is not there. So <clears throat> I think the best reference actually is to look into Japan and figure how the past 10 or 20 years where they have this like a stagflation kind of thing and it's also a uh, aging population what will happen uh, overall obviously you can see i think in japan there are share prices for the past 10 20 30 years even though the companies are not really doing well but then the share prices going into like tens of or hundreds of thousands of yen of uh, price so it's, it's very expensive so uh <clears throat> Moving forward, I think this kind of things will happen whereby they want to active, uh, they want to encourage, uh, like, uh, you know, everybody is supposed to be entitled to a so-called universal income, maybe get what, paid 1000 a month, you know, all these uh, Democrats and everybody is uh, talking about it. So just think about all these, all these uh, concepts and then you want to think about what's the next uh, kind of companies that you want to study and invest because a lot of uh, companies now uh, may not exist in the next maybe 20 30 years because of such an environment yeah uh, that is all for me any question about active roughly my sharing is this because the industry part wise it's uh, it's about the same as previously so i'm not going to share anything about industry it's the same same content basically the 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 trend i'm studying is driverless technology okay yeah hey, i thought they i thought they i thought they cut the what now the driverless car in singapore i don't know i don't know whether they cut or not so uh are still ongoing now oh, yeah is it is it okay uh, still at experimental stage, yeah. Because the like the Tesla, I heard the Tesla they cannot they cannot even uh oh, they, they someone presented is it? The Tesla car they cannot even uh uh what uh park properly uh, is it they got the auto park thing uh. is it yeah 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 you can see online uh, people are complaining about their cars oh well uh it's just about the maturity of the system. Uh. I don't think just because one Tesla got some issue, then it will affect the entire industry. I know BM also doing this, Audi also doing this. Um, the, the parking part, I think, is because of the accumulation of the data that they can reference to. Uh. It's just like in the US, uh, there's driverless car by Tesla. All works well if all the signs around the road are clear. But once the paint on the ground or something, some structure around the road that's not clear, right, then the system will fail. Yeah, but at the end of the day, uh, all your company that you study today, uh, like what Magnala, this one, uh, is uh, they supply what? Uh, the technology? Uh? <clears throat> yeah, the solutions. The whole thing. Uh, but the whole thing also like... No, solutions. Solutions meaning... Like what Daniel is talking about is like you are the one that commissions the project. Not the whole oh, thing. You know? Oh, oh, oh. That means you find supplier to, to, to give you the part and then you... you yeah, yeah, something like that. You, you manage the, the pilot project. Uh. Yeah, something like that. Uh, how's the margin? Uh? Is it profitable yeah. or no, right? So this is the thing we need to dig off. Uh, because at the moment, this is everything is so experimental. Ma. Right or not? Uh -huh. uh, and, then, and then it's not even mature in this industry. So if it is done well and then whoever is able to dominate this uh, driverless tech as in they have the key for example the key ai or key software to hold it then maybe this this one or two companies will, will dominate the driverless uh, revolution for the next 20 20 years possible, basically possible, possible. Possible. Okay. Mm. finally i get a glimpse of what you're talking about okay <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, it's kind of blur all the way. Okay. Yeah, I had to ask question, uh, ma. Yeah. Uh, okay, then. So basically, I'm trying to write the mega trend. Okay, can, 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 can. I, okay, can. Later, I share a link. Uh. I found a, something. All right, Daniel, you can, I think you will continue. Uh. All right, I continue my part. Uh. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'm going to talk about a company called LTM. You or probably some of you already heard of it. This company listed in Australia. So what is it doing? It's basically software, also software, but the software to design the printed circuit boards. Basically, anything that you use, even my laptop, your smartphone, uh, to simple things like electrical appliances that needs uh, processing uh, things even don't need processing things that needs printed circuit boards you will need this software or this type of software to actually engineer it to uh, from engineering to uh, designing the appliances mechanical wise electrical wise eventually to manufacturing you will need this software and this is the attracting part about this soft, uh, this company All right so without further ado, these are stock, uh, basically the company overview. Current employee, 771. Revenue, I've, revenue is slightly less than 200, uh, 200 USD. So that would be uh, 300 Aussie dollar. Okay, anyway, so why do I think this company is a mixed pricing growth potential, PE expansion? Well, PE expansion is, there could be, but I'm still evaluating that uh, market potential. Um, that would be uh, addressing the, the market that's less addressed by the majority of company, uh, such, as, uh, such as individuals and uh, search engines that serve these individuals. It could be a potential uh, drive, further drive, right? Growth potential, well, this company is basically serving Internet of Things, smart car, smart homes, uh, smart city, whatever things that you turn with the smart thing, it will go to that, even AI. So why is it a high quality company? Um, the product, uh, uh, I mean, uh, thanks to, them, uh, to their execution, the product is now one of the most widely adopted uh, software within the industry to design PCB. So, Simply said, you wouldn't know, I mean, you will be called awkward if you don't know this software in that industry. It's like, it's like you say, you don't know Microsoft Word, or you don't know Microsoft PowerPoint, or you, uh, what else? You don't know what is uh, Inventor Autodesk, or you don't know what is SolidWorks in mechanical design, that way. Yeah. Um, the management team, right strategy. That was back then. Um, instead of, uh, I think I will cover the detail later, uh, continue investment into product ecosystem. So yeah, they design ecosystems like Autodesk, like um, Apple, yeah, rather than just standalone software license. So what do they do? I think I jump it through. They provide design software for these printer circuit boards. And, also, uh, and printer circuit boards are the backbones of the hardware. No matter how fantastic is your software, you will need, say, server. And what does server needs? Of course, printer circuit boards. And um, okay. So a little overview of what they offer. Say so they offer PCB design suits which comprise of this design software that has both standalone license, standalone license and uh, subscription basis license. You call it the term subscription. How does it work? It's like you subscribe one time for around three years. So within these three years, you get uh, free updates and uh, what else? Free support uh, and these sort of things. Sorry to interrupt, sorry. Daniel. What's the company name again? Is it Altium? Yes, it is Altium. Okay, cool. Yes, this is a very interesting company. You should uh, study it in 2015. 
Did we? You should. I mean, now the price has shot up so many times. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Actually, yeah, we, it's should, it's we should study it's in 2 I mean, if we look back, we should study in 2012 or 2013. That's when the company tips around, the first tipping points. Now it's about see if there's any potential hidden segments that was you know, mispriced. Yeah, but you are right. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, as I was saying, the main products, still the main products, the main product line is Eldon Designer software. All right, the software that is in the PCB board. These are, these are the complementary software. So how do I put in your perspective? Have you used, uh, have anyone used Microsoft D365? Okay, probably not. Um, or Microsoft Office Suite, right? Probably some of you have heard of it. So Microsoft Office Suite comes with what? Microsoft Office, uh, Microsoft Office, Microsoft Words, Microsoft PowerPoints, Microsoft, uh, what else? Yeah, something Microsoft, right? So, that in a picture? yeah, so, so it's the same here. It's like a suit, okay? You purchase this suit. Of course, you can purchase a same loan like that, of course, but well, if you look at the price, you would rather pay for a suit, simple as that. Okay, so you buy a suit, you get this, you get uh, this, you get, you get, maybe one of these and so on and so forth, all right? They can customize the, the product. Okay. All in all, these are customizable. It means they make the product being able to be adaptable to different needs or uh, aim for different customers. Some customers want cheap, some customers uh, do not have so much budget. So some customers want it, uh, has budget and there's a need for it because of their company-wide adoptions. And you will need a software, for example, like ATM LTM 365, 365, which is a cloud-based ERP system. If you know what is ERP system, it means basically a software that links all the way from engineering design to collaborations between different teams of engineering for this software, which is very important because you don't want you want it to be error-free and one time go. And then link it to production and also link it to procurement and all sync in the same system. This is very, very useful for enterprise-wise. Autodesk has done it. Uh, Microsoft is, is, uh, has done it. We are, our company is using D365 and that's how I get to know, familiar with this 365 thing. <laughs> yeah, I think I run over length on this uh, thing, yeah. Okay, so next segment of product that has been offered, embedded development tools called tasking. Uh, this one, personally, I'm not so familiar with, but uh, from looking at the introduction in the, in the company website, it's basically embedded development tools for smart cars. It's widely used, running to demo, it's widely used in smart car uh, processor, you know, smart cars, you have all these sensors, things, sensor there, sensor here, lights here, auto here. Okay, all this requires some sort of central processors. Central processors are developed using these tasking tools. So what they do, they have a set of uh, pre-engineered uh, coding. Of course, you can customize your own code and they help you to troubleshoot the coding, which is a very important step. You want error-free. So it helps, probably it could help Tesla to develop and make the error. Anyway, next, this is an interesting part. I hope it is, uh, it is still not being realized by the market. I hope, lah. okay. So this part, service offering, what is it about? Octo part, none of us have heard about. I think probably none of us has heard about this. Actually, this is quite an interesting one. And it's one of the growing one, this one. Sorry? Uh, you mean this company or this Octo part? Octopart. Octopart is a very recent thing. Uh, as in how recent? 20, I think 20, 20, let me get back, 2016. Two, uh, yeah, you might be right. Huh? Two, okay, 2016. Okay. okay, started in, they acquired in 2016. 
It's a very interesting one. Um, to put it in short, Octopart is like Google for electronic components. You can try to try their website now as I speak. And just click one of the products. It's very, very helpful for electrical engineers and components uh, engineers, uh, even automation engineers to actually find the parts, electrical parts for their printer circuit boards. Super easy. Free, uh, free for consumers, but of course charge the suppliers. And that's how they earn. Upverters. Upverters is an interesting concept. So I get to know these upverters by actually looking at how the upverters, uh, the founders of the upverters, which was also recently acquired by this Altium, um, about their concept behind. And uh, okay, basically this upverters is the club web-based uh, design software. Similarly, like Altium designer suit, but this is web-based and it's free to use. I think Altium is not so stupid that to release the whole full premium package on the Upverter, but let's put it this way. Why Upverter is free to use? What market is it targeting? It is actually targeting these small pockets of hobbies, hackers, school dropouts, electrical engineers, so on and so forth. I mean, basically these small pockets of uh, customers, smaller scale, much, much smaller scale, even smaller than SME, um, they target them and that's their target market, all right? That's also why it's free to use. But it's free to use uh, what they want from them. Yes, they can use this, these uh, tools, develop their PCB on the website. And what they do is that, you know, you when you develop a PCB, you certainly would do some codings, you certainly would engineer some parts. And what these advertisers can do is that to actually uh, store these design parts from these engineers and these screw dropouts or whatever hackers and hobbies into their database. And why is it important? Because these hobbies, these hobbies actually, they are not they are not like uh, corporate workers. They are more entrepreneurship. Um, they're having more entrepreneurship in a sense where when they get the idea then they start uh, working out, okay, they, they get the idea of uh, actually working some, some automatic controller card. And yeah, I want to work it out. So I think, ding, 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 ding. Okay, I want to do it this way. It may be different from others. It may be unique or it may be the same, okay? No guarantee, but this upward, uh, in short, it acts like a collector's of ideas at the expense of the, uh, of course, free to use design software, but it acts like a collective of ideas. And where these ideas channels to, this is of course my own thinking now, where this idea connects to is connects to the Altium database or the library. Helps that, while at the same time, addressing the needs of these small pockets of hobbies and hackers and school dropouts and electrical engineers. Yeah, I know. I know. Danny, you you keep you keep saying that they're screw drop out. Uh? <laughs> are you biased? Uh? No, I'm actually hoping that these segments, these two segments, are not heavily pricing yet. That's why. Hey, how how they charge uh, up water? Free of use. Huh? Charged. It's free of use. Free? Yeah. Uh? Yes. Huh? Yes. I'm not then, How do we money? Okay. Uh, Daniel. Okay, let me. Maybe you can skip to the numbers part, right? And then, what is the main? When is the main core? Uh, rep, I mean, the money making. Yellow. Segment. Uh, I think what's the product that they're selling oh, that makes okay, the most money? Okay. I get that you guys get bored with my with my tone. Okay, I'll just show you the numbers. Nah. You like that? Shit. Where am I? Okay, you like that? Blue line revenue, red line, orange line is a net profit. Nothing, no debt. Okay, okay. How, how do they make money? Yeah. It's so smooth. It's not even engineered herbs. the numbers. They are set smooth. And this is the margin. 
The margin is still flat, it's still growing, less growth recently, but it's quite high, this net profit margin. So balance sheet, why is that debt? I can't see orange bar here, it means no debt. And working capital, they're on top of the line, means they're actually getting cash in advance. Uh, what else? Retaining earning, I don't need to speak much, right? From here, it goes up to positive, okay? Of course, it starts from loose, and uh, there are more history behind if you're interested to know. Um, operating cash flow, it's just net cash generator, nothing much to say. Capital cycle, whatever capex that they are doing, they're way within their budget, or simply say, I have too many money to spend on KPEX or not much of KPEX needed because it's software development and all they need to spend is R&D. Uh, RE is increasing every year. Mm, I don't know what else to comment. Okay, revenue by product. Now this is an interesting thing, the gray one. Look at the gray one. It start growing from 2016 and you can see that the increment is quite uh, it's quite high, okay? It's much higher than the orange, than the yellow, than the rest. And the gray one is the Octopus search advertising. The one that I say, like, you know, that the Google search for the electronic components. Yeah. Yes, I know that the share price now, you know, is uh, high, P ratio about 60. And so on and so forth. But I'm really hoping that this segment is the one that's still not heavily priced in. And that's why we are, where I want to really dig it out. Um, what else? Geographic revenue. Um, the developed world uh, is having a good growth in development, uh, developed world. Whereas in China and Asia, it's still slow. Um, development management is saying that due to pirate software, and due to, uh, you know, yeah, simply their software is more pricey. How is it being more pricey? Okay, this is also a sharing from some of their electrical engineers in their blog spots. A L term is like a Rolls Royce in their industry in terms of software. How is that so? Um, actually, they haven't compared with another one, which is owned by Siemens called Mantle. Altium main competitor or the competitor that they are targeting or they recognize is Mantle anyway. <clears throat> so Altium software, each subscription standalone one, okay, um, costs uh, OC dollar of 7,000, right? And 7,000 per year. So if you talk about competitors like uh, Cadence, it, Cadence is 3,000 something. Uh, another one by Eagle, which is Autodesk, is uh, 2,000 something, right? All these price range are actually quite expensive for a hobbyist, for a standalone engineers, but they are the ones that are being used by corporates. And the thing is that they, they it's not easy to, to let's just say you, you, you create in Altium, and you want to suddenly use Cadence to do it. It's not something like you can con convert and transfer whatever design you have in Altium to Cadence. Not possible. You have to redo it. <laughs> yeah. So high switching costs are? Yes, that's, that's what they are creating. Lah. It's like you switch from Microsoft to Apple, something like that, or So I like that. Yeah. Enough numbers or you want more? Yeah. Yeah. So what other things? Okay. Skip, 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 skip. Um, okay. So okay. You think? Yeah. yeah. So 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 in terms of business, the juice of juice is that this company choose to design, choose to make the ecosystem around the product instead of focusing 
on increasing your margin, purely increasing your margin and prices. No, they make the ecosystem, they make you love it, they make you stay with it, then they slowly increase the price if they want to at their own time. Why I say this tends to daily run her right business, right people, right timing. Right timing, uh, I guess you all know, is that we are at the age of Internet of Things, uh, born of it. Right people is that uh, the chairman is quite smart in choosing the right CEO to lead the team in, uh, in the business operation, and they have a pretty good capital allocations. Right business is because um, they choose to provide the software instead of going uh, to compete with other technology company or smart car companies or smart homes company in producing uh, in competing to be who's providing the best appliances. No, they provide the, the tools that's needed by all these company to do the work. This is very interesting. I can't stress it more. So <clears throat> what are the possibility that the company would be able to double their earnings? It's been uh, stated by their management that they intend to achieve 100,000 subscribers by 2025. At the current level is 43. Just by the number alone of subscribers, let's just say you remain the current product margin, whatever that is, right? You're going to double the earning just by increasing the sample of subscribers. Um, toxic factors, generally, when you get to high places, you get complacent. But yes, they do have several initiatives in place to 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 keep them going strategic partnerships like they they can lose some of their pricing with key players within say asia for example some of the key players they form their bond form their partnership with them and that helps to penetrate the market why for example you have a a local microsoft like uh, company in asia and when this company is doing is using Altium, you don't expect their suppliers to not to use Altium because in order to sync, you have to use Altium to sync up with them. And this is interesting. Um, yeah, five year goals, so on and so forth. What else? Um, of course, I do not have graph here, but I guess you guys know where we are heading, right? We're not heading over towards Stone Age, we're heading towards Smart Age. Um, this is just straightforward. Mm, substantial shareholders. This is an interesting guy. Mikazemi. Actually, it's Ara Mikazemi. It's an Australian. Israeli. Yeah. Anyway, he's from Israel. And sorry, Iran. Sorry, he's from Iran. I Iran. And from someone who doesn't know how to speak English to someone who knows how to speak English and eventually become a CEO and, well, and a. Uh, a, someone who is passionate about programming and uh, electrical stuff, like techie stuff. Um, no, 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 nothing strange. Um, remunerations, they do have initiative about uh, keeping their management in check uh, on some long-term incentive and short-term incentive. <clears throat> yeah, um, basically they are, they are, they are these, uh, these kind of checkpoints. And uh, this part I'll show you the graph. Yeah. What I have now is this one because I haven't actually uh, tried to do the valuation. I, I should try tonight as well. So um, this is a graph for LTO, green and P57. Cadence is uh, 44. Uh, Dust out is the uh, own, is the company that develops SOLIDWORKS. SOLIDWORKS. Yes. yes. SOLIDWORKS. And this, but this is, is different from Altium. Uh. Altium is more um, like a uh, circuit board, uh, PCB. Uh. Yeah, yeah, but it's related. It's related. Because Altium... Uh, related but different, uh, actually. Related but different. I agree. Yeah. I totally different. Uh, your SOLIDWORKS cannot do PCB. Uh. Yeah, I compare with this is because of their position in their market. SOLIDWORKS, Autodesk, these are all well-known. Uh, and even Pro-E, they are all well-known software. I, I'm sure you know, Wanyang. 
they're all well-known software in mechanical design, uh, mechanical engineering. Similarly, Altium, Cadence, uh, Mantle, uh, what else? One more, one more. Eagle. Eagle is actually by Autodesk. These are well-known uh, software in PCB design software. Yeah. So, so they do have some similarity in terms of, uh, although different industries, they do have similar in terms in, in position in terms of market position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where you can you can actually give a gauge. Yeah. yeah. So, I think this type of software company uh, really depends on the the company that does all this. That means those company that produce the manufacturing and all this. Uh, what software they use? I don't know. Yeah. Like. Do they rely on what they teach at the university? Because what I learned at the university is not what I do in at work lah. But maybe because in Malaysia is different lah. But maybe in overseas is is they, what they learn is what they use lah. Uh, mm. because mm. each software has their own advantage man. Like Malaysia, I confirm AutoCAD man. AutoCAD all the way man. Everyone was AutoCAD man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No matter what industry, all AutoCAD man. Yeah, yeah, AutoCAD, indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so on this, Altum does have penetration in universities. And in, in that respect, it works similarly like Autodesk, like Adopt, like SOLIDWORKS. They want to penetrate into, into universities and, uh, you know, incubate the, uh, their, their minds right from the beginning, something like that. Because once they use, they won't change it. It's, yeah. And, uh, even though Altum is like Rolls Royce, you will still considering using that. Why? Because if your customer, if you are the independent electrical engineer or electrical engineer, you want to design a PCB software that serve a customer who is using Altium, it's not like you you got much choice. You don't have choice. You have to use Altium anyway to sync up with them. Mm -hmm. And on that, uh, yeah, I do have another document that actually talks about the position uh, and adoption of this uh, software. Uh, I'll just skip to the parts. <clears throat> you can see the pricing here. Okay. I think you can just go on because Adrian will only present by next round. Yeah. Okay. Adrian, Adrian won't be joining up. Two, two to three companies or oh, what? Wow. Hey, are you interested in in researching small cap company? Uh? You're asking who? I'm asking yeah. your, you guys. Uh. I, I am. Huh? You you are, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. I give you I give you guys a a link. You can check out this 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 research website, uh. Quite good, uh. I saw uh, quite a few uh they are like uh how they analyze is they analyze those activism uh the management, what the management is doing and all that. Lah. And then like the funds, ah, those those funds, capital funds, buying which company, cap company, ah, they track all this and then they, they actually talk about this. So it's quite interesting. Ah. Like you, you you may be able to find something good also. I saw some, ah, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, it's not like we research our term ah, and, then, and then we just say, oh, yeah, this one you should research 2015. Like, <laughs> it's like, this one is like really, really, wow. Really, really like growing one, lah, growing small cap. This one. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But not to say that big cat cannot grow. La. They are also big cat that are doing quite well. Like Microsoft and all that. It's just that you maybe you won't get the your 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 what? Your two bagger or three bagger in in one year or something. La. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you can carry on. Any other questions that's hey. the end of my presentation? Hey, hey, yeah. Yeah, I say 30 bagger in one year. Hey, that one different. That one today I sent to you, that one is totally bakara one. <laughs> uh this one, this one, this one is uh got, got what one? They got explanation inside the research one. So mm, looks more sense more sensible. And then the interesting thing is that like, in US you have a lot of like those medical testing companies, uh those whatever, lah, huh? those small small companies are uh, which actually in a certain niche which which we don't know lah, which we don't know, and then we, because we don't know, a lot of people don't know lah, actually. Hence, that's why the valuation is lower. LTM also like everyone knows really, ma. Like, 
the the he go and ask. Yeah. So yeah, something to consider. Right? Something to consider, huh? Okay. Oh, Danny, I thought you were share something. Good idea. Um. Anything else? No idea. Well, no. no. Twelve o'clock here. Mm. Technically, yeah, we are, technically yeah. we are on time. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> technically. <laughs> okay. Hey, I thought it was something to share, Daniel. Nothing really. Yeah. I thought it was scrolling something. Hmm. I thought you were scrolling something just now. Yeah. Actually, actually, I was asking. I was asking like if you guys got any questions or want to know more. Oh, no, oh then, well, then, then, then that will be all long for my presentation for now. I think it's very interesting, uh, you, If you're able to find out the, the what, uh, uh kind the, of the, 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 right. When the, the when did they IPO? Uh? I team IPO in nineteen ninety nine. And then oh, only I'm recently sure. they shot up, is it? They recently shot up, but actually the management. Uh, make the decision in 2010 and that's the interesting part so i mean when they shot up was on 20 what 2015 uh, like I when they first shot up they shot up in 2014. ah first okay time. first time first time timing like okay understand first time why 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 2013 was the low point then 2014 showed up one time 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018 continue to revise PE and continue shoot up. No lah, hey, even in 2011 already start to shoot already lah. No. <sighs> it just 20, goes a little bit out and come down already. 2010 to 2014 is 1000% eh brother. Uh, yeah, if you're investing in 9 cent stock lah. Ah uh, yeah lah, true lah, true lah. Uh, so that time it will be a very small cap lah. That time. time is a very small cap kind of company lah. Every yeah. time, every time I get to spot this type of companies, but then never invest on them. Hey, you spot it before. Yeah, yes, I spot it quite long ago already, but I just, just stay right there. I never touch. Hey, yo. Bye. No, no, no. Where, where you see it? Where you see it? I, I have my sources, lah. <laughs> huh? Yeah. You, you go tempers and only give you Altima. Uh, something like that. Uh, I, I got, got uh, win. Uh. Uh, your Richard, share my sources. My share one. Hey, that time I also don't know. Don't know who are you. That was 2000, what? Uh, 2014. Uh. Actually, no, no. The time, the, the time I think I was looking into it roughly was uh, 2015. It's about the same time when I was looking at A2. Uh. But then I think oh, I understand it's more, more than LTM, so... Oh, yo, 2015 Vestor until now is 600% bro. It's 80 or 700% minimum. Oh, yeah, yeah la, la. La. Okay, that's la. why. La. Okay, la. Okay, la. okay la. fair enough, la. fair enough. Okay. <laughs> hey, Adrian say what? I got LTM, yeah. but not now. First, let me get this through the slide. To... Andy Chow, you mean you mean he saw Altium or he bought Altium? <laughs> I think I have to present Altium. Oh, okay, uh, Altium is anyway. Altium is a good company. Seriously, it's a good company. Uh, no doubt, no doubt. It, uh, wait, hey, no Altium new point. growth A two unknown ah, can mm, Altium still got potential to grow seriously. Yes, yes, it's about it's about the valuation now, lor, Whether it's worth it going now. I mean, in terms of business, in terms of industry overview, in terms of numbers, in terms of management, mm, yep. it's pretty good in all this segment. I thought this good. team, I thought this team no longer talk this word valuation already. Eh? Well, it's still valuation, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, this is one of the one of the rare companies that they can find you know all these four segments of well doing pretty pretty good yeah yeah uh, 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 bullshit <laughs> yeah bullshit thing yeah. 
Uh, but anyway, uh, I think overall, the entire list of companies that we study, the most interesting one will be the insurance okay. for pets, right? Tropanian, mm. yeah. The first time I see it, so I don't know. I mean, the, the, the company that has the highest chance to become a multi X 50 few years mm. kind of company is probably this, right? Yeah. Is at the point, right? I saw from numbers just now. Huh? Sorry? I saw from numbers just now, it's almost like at the tipping point for the. For yeah. the <laughs> Suppose, if not mistaken, this year should be turned positive for everything. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, oh, you know? <laughs> oh, you know? Monday Q, wait for what? Monday Q, where? Uh, it's listed in US. Uh. US, next step. Now can queue already. Uh. Oh, now, oh, now, now, now can queue. Uh. Now open. Uh. Okay, queue uh. Ready, ma? You can queue, ma? No cap. Uh. The market cap about 1.1 billion already. It's actually quite high. 1 billion. For a losing market. Well, is considered small, lah. No, Sorry. When did they go listed? Twenty fourteen. And then from twenty fourteen until now, how many times already? Or oh, it's still losing money. Share price. Yeah. Share price no lah. Share price go up already. Share price. How many times? The thirty one dollar. I mean, when the IPO. IPO uh, 11, then oh, they yeah. drop yeah, to oh, no. the IPO, then they drop to $5 something, then go after that from 5 until highest 45, 46. Mm-hmm. Then now drop, drop, Why? drop, drop. Oh. Oh. Why $5? They can't do one buy. This one here. I haven't uh, met you yet. Oh, you haven't met me yet. I uh, sad. Uh, sad, 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 sad. But anyway, interesting company. Interesting company. Simple, Just don't know the uh, valuation is it there. Yeah. One thing is very simple, and then the way they earn money just that way. They hey, don't have multiple sources. Hey, first time I hear Richard say valuation isn't there. Wow, you got to do valuation one, uh, brother. Ayo. <laughs> Ayo. Joking, joking. Get out, get out. <laughs> That's an interesting question, uh, Huan Yang. <laughs> I'm so mysterious, uh, Huan Yang. Actually, you don't know a lot of things about me. Uh. Yeah, la. <laughs> sure, go back. Uh, open SL, do valuation. Uh, see this. One. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah, but okay. Anyway, I think that's about it. Uh, yeah, I, I just want you guys to think about this the macro thing that I shared. And then pick companies that is more related to the topics. Uh. Wait, wait, your marketing. thing? I thought you only shared about your 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 driverless car thing. Oh, you you didn't hear what I shared, man? Just now, macro. Oh, maybe I didn't hear properly. Yeah. Oh. Am I am I later? I go and check back. Okay. Got okay. summary? Yeah, no summary. Yeah. <laughs> I I did attach it empty, but I did not upload the slide yet. So yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, I mean, the macro one basically is just questioning about what is the direction for the next few years because we don't know. Everybody's talking about crisis and stuff, but then uh, I don't know how the crisis will happen. So current climate. That's about it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And, yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, and any any again any questions you guys have regarding this driverless thing? Uh? Why why am I studying this? You guys don't understand. Of all the Internet of Things things, right? You choose this driverless, not like you know, uh, <coughs> what say? Not not other not things. Like, not like Amazon type of business. Uh, tell me that. Or even or even there's a new trend now which is the retail smart thing like you know use VR and these sort of things like and uh, go inside the shop don't even need to change code and you need to, and you already know whether it's fixed or this sort of tech mm-hmm. you don't need to do that but you choose smart car I mean which one is the most car. practical most practical one most practical 
or yeah. rather most likely say sorry what do you mean most practical, practical, now practical is in, terms business, uh, in terms of business ah in terms of in terms of as a business point of view not in terms of uh in terms of for fun oh to me ah uh, 5g uh, 5g in terms of difficulty wise driverless car will take a longer time right yes driverless car will take a longer time yeah. so it's it's a mega trend kind of thing but I tell you, I, I mean, just my opinion about this driverless thing at the moment that I'm researching for these few months will be mainly about uh, <clears throat> the biggest cost towards... Okay, actually, in Aptive, right, they point out something very interesting is that uh, they are actually collaborating with the LYFT or right? Lyft, right? basically it's the like Uber's competitor. Right? Even okay. Magna is also doing the same thing. Then if, if you see these two companies are doing the same thing, actually what are, what are they telling us? It's kind of all these so-called uh, companies, uh, they are no longer so dependent on car manufacturers like BMW or GM or whatsoever already. You know? It's almost like this, for example, like Uber, which is basically the uh, downstream, the lowest of the downstream that is moving up the vertical and now they are actually able to perhaps manufacture their own cars, build their own technologies and provide all these solutions. Then the ultimate <clears throat> the ultimate cost for all this e-hailing is what? Is it a car? What's the biggest cost? <clears throat> Biggest cost is actually the right. driver. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if I eliminate one car, one driver out of every taxi, you know how much money Uber makes. Uh? This why. This is why Uber, even though it's always burning money, burning money, burning money, their ultimate long term goal is actually to create uh, this driverless uh, taxi driverless logistics lah. then then think about it in this manner lah. I don't want we don't want to talk about Malaysia because I think uh, driverless car in Malaysia or driverless whatever in Malaysia I think takes another hundred years lah. but mm. <coughs> in the US which is already somewhat developed and with Tesla leading the way uh, and I think Tesla is also doing driverless uh, sorry uh, semi-automatic driving You have this uh, uh, cargo trucks, which is, for example, like all these Korea companies now, this e-commerce and everything, such a drastic big disruption happening. And it's all miniature <laughs> small items that they're sending. And then you use a Korea company like GTEx and everything. It's very expensive, right? In terms of having mm. a driver to send all these things moving here and there. And... And although Amazon is like trying to do all these drone deliveries and everything, but I think in practical mm. terms, having uh, vehicles traveling, driving around the road is still more uh, sensible. Uh. So if they can eliminate the biggest cost again, which is drivers, uh, all these logistic companies will make a lot of money. So that I feel will be the next really big thing rather than uh, drone delivery, rather than uh, you know all this, all this funny, funny stuff that you are that we are thinking of, lah. Combined with the fact that hopefully five G will be stable and widely implemented, and then cloud computing, cloud computing is already widely Im implemented, and then uh, the the chipsets, the AI and everything is also ready and waiting to just launch. So it's just <clears throat> kind of ripe and a ripe environment for everything to happen, basically. So if, if, if you kind of, if you're able to capture this trend, it's like you're able to capture... self <laughs> driving vending machine. <laughs> yeah, you're able to capture a trend that that happens when 4G comes out. Lah. So this is what my thought process is. Mm -mm. Yeah. Okay. That's about it. Okay. Very, that means you're looking at the horizon of uh, 10 years uh, at least. Yes. Yes. Don't you want 50 bagger? 50 bagger in in 10, 10 months. Uh. 10 months or 10 years. <laughs> Are you, uh, 
Very greedy, you know? <laughs> Sorry, lah. Just kidding, just kidding. Okay. <laughs> intro, intro more of this type of 30x companies, ah. I also want it. Give give you all this all this all this bubble company right? Oh my yeah. god! Looking at it lah, every day they're doing fifty percent. Yeah, what a lot. This, not every day. Every day. Ah, every day. Serious, every day. You can see yeah, everything go red lah. Only they're go green lah. Very weird lah. Can you find more of these companies? <laughs> I need to find it earlier. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> then, <laughs> then, then then you must have the courage to go and go in. So you know, everyone going 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 keep going there. But what is it about like what's so so nice but it's like it's the previously they go rank lithium like that or it's an it's a my it's a, a minor company uh. okay. oh mining mm. again uh. mm, mining mining <laughs> art go is a mining like this one is a marble miner oh marble some okay mm. oh okay. unknown <laughs> okay <laughs> Then the, the title that the website says is Lose Your Marbles. <laughs> Serious? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're saying that this is a... They're they like issuing a warning at that. Uh. Like saying that uh, oh. this one is like a what? Uh? You uh, mean they're short sellers, is it? Sorry? You mean they're short sellers, is it? They are not a short seller. Listen, you know the web website, the WEBB one? The David Web? Oh, David Web. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's, 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 he's a short seller. He's a short seller. He's a short seller. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. But that's interesting, like, He always write about all these type of companies. Yeah, he's a short seller. He make a few hundred million of short selling from short selling. Oh, okay. Yeah, he went to Bloomberg. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, interesting. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Anything oh, else to discuss? Hmm. Forever get one thousand unrealized profit. <laughs> What 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 did the uh, Terry kind of share? I wasn't able to listen in just now. Wherever is the note taker just now? Um, I think everyone's unclear because of the on the business model. Okay, we we don't know what's the business model. Okay, <laughs> but yeah. what what I recall asking Terry is that because the last few years these uh, active seem to have a stagnant. Basically, stagnant revenue, stagnant thing lah for a couple of years already lah. I didn't know about the cash flow or the balance sheet there lah. So, okay, then why so, is the share price going up ah, Even though they are not making money. Actually, it was seen say? More So that's why that's the curious part lah. And I asked them because he said he didn't look into the business. So okay, don't even know okay. what the company is doing. Okay. Yeah, so so actually for the past few years since 2015 i think revenue and, and net profit and uh, earning per share everything stuck it's like stagnant okay yeah so, so okay that would be Thanks. interesting to know all right guys i think we need to end here yeah see you guys, right. see you guys.